Hey. Hi. How are you doing? Good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Doing well. Good. You look cute. You do too. Where are you? Thank you. Um, I'm in LA. I'm at home. <laughs> nice. Yeah, oh, it's still so nice outside. Yeah, girl. Daylight savings. Was it raining today? No, it wasn't. Not for- not the spaces that I was in. Um, and yesterday was like super hot. We went down to Seward and walked around. It was beautiful. Nice. It was raining pretty much all day here. It looked like Seattle. <laughs> you know, LA needs that though. It needs like the, it's too dry. Seriously. It's like one day out of the month it rains and it's been, it's like good. Yeah. But yeah, just waiting for some folks to join in. Nice. Um, well, for those of you that do not know what Layers is, we at The Feels started this series through our Instagram channel that basically gets to get different creatives and artists um, on here so we can talk and get to know you guys a little bit better. So I know... Sometimes it's hard to um, get to know, like, different creatives that you follow on Instagram because you don't really get to talk too deeply to them. So we just wanted to take some time out of the day to get to know you a little bit better. Um, We took a pretty long break from doing this series, um, but we are excited to be back tonight with a very special guest, Farrah Stugraff. She is a badass mama jeweler and boss and is the owner and creator of a ferris jewelry um i will let you introduce yourself a little bit and tell folks about you and who you are um well i mean thank you for the the intro (laughs) um as tori mentioned i have a jewelry line called ferris just named it after myself because my mom did it the best um but yeah just um I make jewelry here in Seattle we have a studio um I also have a store that we just opened at the towards the end of last year um born and raised here and here being Seattle um lived in the bay for a while and that's where I started my practice and then moved back home when things started to get real and been here since yeah I love that yeah I feel like once you start in Seattle at some point like you get tired of it but then you always end up going back yeah I think I always knew I was going to come back just because my family's here um yeah I know who was going to be as soon as it was but it it felt good when I did and yeah it's just you know it's home (laughs) it's good you're able to like really do everything from Seattle. I know sometimes people feel like um, growth isn't possible, like to your fullest extent in Seattle. But I've seen like people like you and other folks who I really have seen do a lot in the last few years really do it based out of Seattle. And it's so awesome to see. um, Because people think Seattle is kind of a small, quiet city. But yeah, it's pretty progressive and a yeah, good place. As it's like smallness and it's quietness, and you know, I I think that's like something I I struggled with a little bit, but um, I think what Seattle's really good for is like the incubation. You could just like come here during the winter time. You know, it's not that enticing to go out. So you're like, well, yeah. I'm gonna my head's down and I'm working and I'm grinding it out and you know with the internet and just resources the way that they are you're able to be a lot more international um and so it doesn't really matter where you're based you can just you can kind of take off in whatever direction you'll will to so yeah I know it's always cool to see how people are able to do that especially with the internet now everything it seems possible (laughs) through the internet and social media it's easier to reach folks yeah um so how did you get involved in jewelry you kind of said something about your mama earlier so oh um, well how did I get with your brand well I don't know if that was kind of no that was just 
I was coming up with a name. I was like brainstorming and I was like, I guess she just named me well, or my parents named me well. I don't really need to mess with it. But like jewelry, I mean, I started metal smithing right when I moved to the Bay. So that was um, in 07. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a minute ago. Um, and I just started taking courses. I think I had like a, I had a, like a, a, you know, just like a nine to five that wasn't too inspiring and, you know, naturally, or for me, like, I love just taking courses. I'm like, kind of like a, a, a course queen, but I just, you know, I would take metal smithing courses um, and graphic design courses or um, sculpting courses, ceramics courses, sewing courses. Like I would just take courses all the time. Yeah. Metal smithing was actually one of the first ones I did. Um, and I loved it. I loved like being able to take raw material and it would be so little, you know, the, yeah. the actual material would be really small. Um, and with like some effort, you could make something really beautiful, anything. So that kind of like, I really loved that process. But then I think when I got into wax carving, it just kind of was like, oh, this is, I think that's like where, what I love the most. And that's like kind of the practice that I, that I, that I thrive in. Were um, those, is wax carving, sorry, I'm not too familiar with the process yeah, I, of jewelry creation, but is it those, you posted something on your Instagram like last week or something, mm -hmm. that mold, is that wax carving? Yeah, so it's like literally you start from a block of wax and it's kind of like a, comp it, you know, it's literally wax that has like, um it has like a you know like plastic wax and everything mm -hmm. and you would um you would just carve out you just carve out of it and you can make whatever you want into it and you use like things like dental tools and stuff like that or modify dental tools into making something sculptural um that you can wear really is yeah. my jewelry practices um but that was kind of when things really kind of started to flow with me in the jewelry setting for sure. Nice. Did you, so I know you said you like to take all these courses, but was like jewelry something you have always kind of been yeah. into and like, oh, like I just want to take all these courses, but I already know like I'm going to be super well, I well, I mean, okay. Like, I think I always knew I would own my own business. I didn't mm -hmm. know what I would be in. I've always been loved accessories though I've loved beading since I was little I had like beading kits when I was little and I would just beat all the time and um you know I think that's everyone's like entry for it into jewelry is beading yeah um and then I but I think I just always loved accessories ever since I was young like I was um I remember going to like the bond back in the day with my mom to go <laughs> shopping and um Oh, I would, you know, she'd be like, okay, let's pick out some jeans or something. And I'd be like, can I get these earrings? She'd be like, no. <laughs> out your outfit for the year. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, but it's just like, I, I always wanted really big earrings too. I didn't want like little tiny studs or anything yeah. like, like big bows or something playful and fun. So I think I've just naturally always been drawn to it. Um, I, I think I actually I started I took my first course too because I love jewelry so much and I would wear it but I'm kind of absent-minded too and I would lose my jewelry a lot and yeah. I, I gotta I gotta learn how to do this I gotta learn how to make it and um, yeah so I did <laughs> I love it so yeah. you said you started in like 07 how mm -hmm. have you learned how to master your craft and your passion? Like your work has a very unique look to it. And it's very like distinct. I'm like, oh, that's a Ferris piece. <laughs> um, <laughs> did it always start off that way? Like your style? My style? No, my style, I feel like it, it evolves every single collection. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that I'm still mastering it. I'm far from any type of mastery. Um and it's really like more of a playful exploration, you know, and it's it, at my best. That's what it feels like. And it's, um, but like, I think that when I first started, you know, I think I was like really into geometric spaces and 
um, or like just love geometric. I was like really inspired by Bauhaus movement and like, you know, the Black Mountain College movement and everything like that. And so I like looked into like kind of like the craft movement of the mid century and, and, and just kind of delved into that and started playing with sheet metal was really kind of how I first started playing and how do I, can mm -hmm. I sheet metal? And so the first, my first collection were these big sculptural plates kind of that you would make large necklaces from. Um, now, fast forward, I'm on my 20th collection. So it's been oh. like quite a few collections since then. Um, but now it's like very organic and melting. And um, it, it still has like, I think, you know, I, I, I think I'm in, in general, I, I think I have like a little bit more minimalism or modernism in in my in my aesthetic but um I do but I I still want it to be playful and yeah I don't know it's just kind of it's an evolution it is like a complete yeah. but I but I I hope um yep Yanni you do have one of those <laughs> next I need to see it Yanni <laughs> um but the I, I hope you can see my pieces and they feel like Ferris for sure. Yeah, I definitely feel like yeah. I see like newer jewelers and stuff like that in like a bunch of the stores. And I'm like, that looks a little familiar. <laughs> I, I know it's not Ferris, but it looks like they were maybe seeing your work and inspired by it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think like when you start a practice, a lot of times you start by mimicking, right? And yeah. that's like, I think that's a really great way to practice, to be honest. Like, I think it's yeah. such, you know, you see something, you love it. And I think that a lot of creative practices are like almost collages of yeah. art forms that they've seen and taking what they love and mashing it into your own type of vision. So I think it's like a very natural thing to mimic. Um, yeah. But yeah, it happens. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I know I've talked to you a little bit before about like drawing inspiration and stuff like that. Um, and there's so much to see now. I mean, it's so easy to see everything too through Instagram and like Pinterest and stuff like that. Where do you draw like most of your inspiration from? I know you mentioned a few earlier, but. Yeah. I mean, I think I like look at different art movements. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of sculptors because that is kind of like what I really feel like when I am making my jewelry. Yeah. Um, and I mean, yeah, but I think like, like, you know, there's sculptors and everything that it, it and different artists that I look to that I'm like, Oh wow, they're so inspiring. And, and they're stylistically, I really love how they like create this, um, texture or something like yeah. that right? and take something from there. But then I think ultimately I'm super inspired just by like dope women that I see that, yeah. wow, you're super, what would you wear? And I, I remember I would <laughs> use almost like make an imaginary woman in my head, like this, you know, you know, some prototype of a person and be like, okay, what would she wear? And yeah. <laughs> like make it for her. And so that was kind of, um, definitely like a an avenue of creation for me and and sometimes you know it because I think that I wanted to do so many different types of things and to like reel it back in I like the really kind of marinate with an idea and just yeah it. so I don't know if that makes any sense yeah. yeah yeah definitely see a lot of movement in your pieces so it's cool to hear that and that like sculptures it's interesting to hear how like different forms of art inspire completely like different lanes of work so yeah what so when you are like a little bit in a creative block when you're not feeling so inspired by all of the things how do you get out of a creative funk I know you have like you said you're on your 20th collection which is crazy that's such uh -huh. an amazing thing like how do you keep creating Was you know a place where you don't feel like creating cool. yeah I, I, I you know it's a good question I think that sometimes I when I'm in my biggest blocks um 
it's because I think I'm like trying to chase an aspiration or chase like, um, yeah. like a predestined destination, which like, I, I think at my best creative moments that doesn't really exist. Right. And so I need to like step myself out of that, take a step back and just kind of like recast like the, the kind of just like the energy that I'm going for and just being yeah. like, really like what's the substance of what I'm trying to create and a lot of the times that's just going for a walk and just kind of or doing some yoga or just like kind of creating some time for myself to let my head ruminate a little bit um you know sometimes it's you know thinking about really inspiring women around me and like visualizing what would they wear in this type of stylistic form or something like that and yeah. um but really just taking a step back to like, you know, pause and be like, pause, stop <laughs> it, take a step back and like, let's re-explore where we're going for. Yeah. I feel like sometimes it takes just not something so complex to get out of a creative block. I know you've helped me get out of a creative block quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been nice. I'm like trying to force it, but um. So I want to know a little bit more about your store post lockdown, like right after or kind of in the middle of all the madness of COVID, you were in the process of opening your store, um, which is beautiful, by the way, you guys did an amazing job with the build out. It looks so awesome. What was the process like for that? I know you probably had plans of doing this before COVID even was a thing. So what was the process like trying to open up a new store in the middle of the madness? Yeah, I literally signed the lease February of 2020. So it was like, oh right at, you know, like right before I had really like engulfed the States at all. And I had no idea it was gonna I, I mean, I say this frequently, but I literally predicted COVID incorrectly at every single moment. I was like, yeah. Oh, it's Oh, nope, nope. <laughs> I'm I I was wrong literally every single time I tried to guess. But um I you know, it was it was it was a long process and a lot of just being patient with the process. Um I I had it, you know, I really envisioned it as like a community space where we could have pop-ups and bring different designers in and and um something that felt like a really solid extension of like what I was trying to do um but obviously you couldn't do that you couldn't gather like what's you know yeah. and I it rather than trying to figure out how can I gather under these circumstances it was just taking a pause and letting myself breathe for a little bit and um and I think that was the name of the game for me personally for COVID I mean I, I think it didn't seem like that because in the end I did open the store and um, and then also had a baby too. So that was like kind of a lot, but the, um, but the, but I think it was just like being patient with it. Um, and I, I, you know, at first I wanted to bring in a lot of third party brands and make it more of like a concept shop. And I was like, you know, like we have to just start small. Like we, yeah. we, we don't know what the environment's going to be and how it's going to evolve. So mm -hmm. um, we really just kind of started it small, did appointment only. And then at the end of last year, so a year and a half after um, I signed the lease, we finally kind of opened um, and it feels good. It feels great, though. I, I love we I had a store before in Belltown um, that was more clothing, but then it was like kind of a showroom for my jewelry. And so I knew I always wanted a store again. So, But it, it feels good that it's open. That's good. Yeah. Oh, I lost you a little bit. I can't hear you. Oh, so I, weird. Sorry, my internet's been kind of in and out the last few days. Um, well, congratulations on the store. Yeah, the store is beautiful. Every time I walk in there, it's very you and it 
<laughs> brings the whole aesthetic of your whole line out. So it's awesome. I want to go see. I don't think I've been there since it's like fully been opened um, without appointment only. I think I was only going there around that time. Um, but it's so inspiring to see your work ethic. And like, I think I always like admire how you just boss up every time like and it's it's cool seeing like other women especially women of color in the Seattle area like I said early on tonight that it's cool seeing people from Seattle really do their thing and really embrace it to the fullest like what advice do you have for other women who are trying to start a business or really take their craft or passion seriously like what advice do you have to give them um it's all cumulative. And so just keep at it, you know, like, it, like every single step you take builds onto the next one. And you really just, it, I think consistency, you know, you hear that a lot. And, um, and I think when you're starting, it's really hard to see um, the, the, like, you know, the joys of your consistency, but the, um, just staying with it and keep going and just continue to push yourself. And, and for me, I loved to evolve and like, kind of like be like, okay, where can I go next and everything. So that was, um, that was always something for me, but yeah, I think just, just stay at it and don't give up really. I mean, I think that a lot of people, I think it's really easy to give up and I feel like, the moment I almost gave up because it wasn't really working. I wasn't making money. I, um, you know, the whole reason why I moved back to Seattle was because I had no money. I was like, okay, I got to move in with my parents at 30, you know, and it was just one of those things. But um, what, right when I was about to quit, it started working. Yeah. And it, it kind of does that for you. So I think that um, just consistency, keep it dip coming and, you'll, you'll reap the rewards. You just yeah. push them. Cool. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I feel like I've also been able to relate to that, just being in a spot where you're just like ready to give up and then something, something happens and something switches. So to really stay at it is good advice because I hear a lot about people who just, once they get to that point, they don't really know what to do. And it yeah. can be hard to continue. Yeah, no, it can definitely be hard, but it's also momentum building. And yeah, you know, when I started to, I leaned a lot on my friends and my community. Um, you know, like, uh, like a friend of mine built my website. Another friend, yeah. like, you know, took pictures for me. Another friend you know, design my logo. And it was just like every, you know, like your community really helps you out if yeah. you show up. And um, it was, it, it was like definitely a community effort. My sister is a, a writer. And so she like, she like wrote all my copy and, um, and like really kind of pushed my jewelry out there. Yeah. Um, when I wasn't really ready. And I remember her just being like, there's trust, trust. <laughs> it's not ready. Like I'm not <laughs> doing I'm out there. I'm not ready for that. But she was just like, trust, just trust the process. And you know, I did and and it and it and it worked or it's working. Um, you know, if it continues to, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Sure it will, no doubt. Um we heard you say something about you having a baby recently. Yeah. A cuteless baby. Has yeah. he inspired <laughs> any of your new work? I know you came out with a men's line. In I did. Recently? I have, yeah. I mean, you know, it was definitely, I kind of brought it out as men's line, but it's super genderless. Yeah. Uh, actually, a lot of more women, I feel like, are buying it. But I think <laughs> that my client base is more women-oriented. Um, but yeah, I did. And I do have a Batiste necklace <laughs> and it's a black pearl, um, on this like Baroque textured bale. Um, but it's, and, um, his middle name's Pearl because he's mm. precious. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm like in the middle of, or I've been, 
I shouldn't say I'm in the middle of it. I've been wanting to fully carve um, a, actually an ear pendant because when oh I was breastfeeding him, you know, I just looked down at the side of his face and he has the perfect ear, <laughs> like the perfect ear in the world. I actually had my friend who's a ceramicist um, make a ear sculpture, a ceramic ear sculpture that I have. Um, yeah in my store and it's of Batista's ear because I think it's perfect so um, cute. like enough it too so that would be cute that would be very yeah. cute <laughs> no. I mean, so those things you're just like I'm always listening to you I <laughs> and it's yeah. so sweet easy and sweet that's where oh. I'm at <laughs> well I hope you do come out with that necklace soon do you have any upcoming projects you're working on that you're okay sharing with us or anything exciting? Um, uh, well, I just finished, I, I wrapped up a fine line. So I'm doing, cause the majority of my jewelry is um, more fashion jewelry. It's mm -hmm. based or sterling silver based and we do um, gold plating and stuff too. But I just finished a fine line, um, and it's uh, released exclusively with Essence right now. And then I'm going to be releasing it in the store and online soon. Um, and I think I'm going to I'm doing a, a a kid like a collaboration with Mem. Um, it's a little um, do a little kit and have a workshop and stuff like that in the beginning of the summer sometime so just I'm hoping to activate my store too more with pop-ups yeah. so y'all know anybody that want to do pop-ups at the store or or anything like that shoot me I'm open um yeah that's exciting I can't wait for that collab that'll be super cute I'm, I'm stoked <laughs> yeah well thank you for sharing so much with us tonight do you have anything else you want to say before we get into these rapid fire questions and q and a's from the folks here um i don't know <laughs> <laughs> if you have any questions for me i'm happy to answer them but um yeah i think i mean thanks for having me and yeah yeah of course. Okay, let's do something a little fun. Okay. Not that this last half an hour wasn't extremely fun talking to you. <laughs> okay, we like to do a little round of rapid fire. Okay, ready? Coffee or tea? Tea. Favorite album of all time? Voodoo, D'Angelo, or Mama's Gun, Erica. Okay, okay. <laughs> Your go-to restaurant in Seattle? Tsukashimbo. Oh, I was thinking about that yesterday. Yeah. Um, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Oh, um, I don't know. I, I, I really, I love Mexico City. I think I, I, I would, I would do Mexico City. It's nice. Yeah. If you weren't creating jewelry, what would you be creating? You know, I really want to step more into like an art practice. I love sculpture. Um, like big large scale collage painting type works that would be dope if you could swap lives with someone for a day who would it be mm. I honestly can't think of anybody <laughs> but if I could choose a BFF it would be Zoe Kravitz Ooh, that works yes. yep <laughs> yep favorite <laughs> artist um I think Probably Noguchi. Um, he's like kind of like one of the first um, sculptures that I got super into. And so um, I, I just love his work always. Um, childhood celebrity crush. <laughs> um, <laughs> I heard genuine. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye West or Pete Davidson? I'm a Pete. I'm on team Pete. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> if you were on a deserted island, what three things would uh, you bring? Okay, what'd you say? If you were on a deserted island, what three things would you bring? Um, I'd go really practical. I'd bring some string, um, a flint. And... <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I knew what? you were going to say something like that. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> a bag of hot Cheetos, some paint, <laughs> maybe water. 
Yeah. Um, your favorite quote? Oh, uh, gosh. You know, I, I'm not um, academic enough to, like, pull out a quote from memory that's, like, profound and authentic. But um, I think one of the things that I heard that I was, like, I, I, I love that was to just follow your generous impulses. Now, all of the generous impulses that, that, that you feel, like, do it. That's my love one. I haven't heard that. Yeah. Um, your favorite show currently? <sighs> Euphoria was wonderful. I mean, it was, I mean, it was dark and it was crazy, but the girls outfits were dope and their makeup and um just it was it's it's a good show it's it was so good yeah it was pretty crazy this last season um and I've been trying to figure out a new show to watch on Sundays have you watched so C watch what B with Jason Momoa no I would want to be Zoe's BFF Ooh, I but haven't seen it. what channel is <laughs> or what um see it's it's just like about like the civilization gone blind wow. i yeah. have to watch it i need something new to binge and get yeah. into yeah well that was our last rapid fire question um does anybody have any questions for ferris now is the time that we open up the questions <laughs> so drop them in and we can answer a few before we take off for the evening i see one okay do you see the Ferris brand adding other items, clothing, accessories, et cetera? Man, I would love to. I, I love accessories and I love clothing, to be honest. Um, and I would love to. Um, it's about capacity a little bit for me right now. And, um, but I would, I would really like to. And I've thought about it and I have some ideas. So it's about follow through. So if you want to help me out with that, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, I'm always down the hill. Well, I will plan on being around in Seattle a little bit more. So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Well, I have a question. Okay. Is Batiste going to make an appearance tonight? Oh, I thought maybe. <laughs> but then he was kind of angsty, and so he went with Dad to go get some tacos. Oh, cute. I know. Sorry. I oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> totally okay we get to see him on instagram all the time yeah so does anybody else have any questions before we close out for the evening i think you did such a great job tonight at answering all of my questions <laughs> yeah okay where do you like drawing your inspiration from and what keeps you motivated to create um well we talked about that a little mm -hmm. bit um, drawing inspiration from different art movements. I go into them a lot. Um, and, um, other, other women really, honestly, just like having, just looking at like dope, powerful women and like, what would they wear and thinking about that a lot. Um, what was the second part of the question? Um, what keeps you motivated to create? Oh, um, I think it's just kind of like an internal thing, like to continue to push myself, um, mm -hmm. to, to stay engaged and curious. And, um, I, I, I genuinely love what I do. And I, I know that does sound cliche, but, um, I think it's just kind of every time that I sit down and allow space for me to create, it, it gets me so excited and, and it feels, it, it feels like that's the juice for me. That's like why I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a morning or evening routine? Oh, um, morning okay, routines I'm not the best at, but, um, you know, I love a glass of uh, hot lemon water in the morning. Um, I make my oatmeal. Um, at my best, I meditate, but that's definitely not of late. And evening you know, again, at my best, wash my face, do a nice little cream. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but no. I feel like I've never seen you guys watch TV. We you don't said Netflix and chill, right? Yeah, we don't watch TV too, too much. Um, but, um, but when we do, we go in. Um, but it's only after Batiste goes to sleep. Actually, he just came home. Oh. Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll say hi. 
Okay, last question is, uh, how do you find the time for business, baby, creativity, and still look and fly and self-care? Oh, my God. There's so, <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I feel like there's never enough time. But you just have to kind of um, – it, just a little bit at a time, you know, you just do as much as you can and you can't all do it at once. Um, but I think that just creating healthy balance yeah. is super important. Um, and also just in general, I have like an amazing family. Um, my younger sister watches my son uh, three days a week. My mom watches him one day a week. Um, my partner is super supportive um, and holds me down in a lot of ways. So just community, family, and balance. That's all you <laughs> I know. You're like, there's not enough time. <laughs> oh, is he coming? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Can you say hi? <laughs> hey. Yeah. <laughs> What a good last treat. Yeah. I love it. Thanks so Hi. much. Hi. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much for taking time out to chat tonight. It was so awesome, as always, chatting with you. I will leave all of your information for the fields folks that are here tonight. Um, and we will be doing another layer session in the next few weeks. So thank you again for being here tonight and for the little special guest. Yeah. Thanks for <laughs> us. Yeah. yeah. Have a good night. Bye, yeah. Matisse. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Say bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye. bye. Thank you. Bye.